Hello, welcome to this presentation of Advanced Steel, the structural detailing solution from Greytech. First of all, I'd like to give you an introduction to Greytech, the company, followed by an overview of Advanced Steel features, some references and case studies, and then the demonstration of the actual software. Greytech, the group, was founded in 1986, and today we have 250 plus employees, 40% of those related to research and development. Our turnover is in excess of 30 million euros, and we have 10 offices around the globe of our own company. We also have resellers covering the rest of the globe where we don't have our own office. There are over 40,000 users worldwide of Greytech Solutions and over 600,000 projects have been completed in our kit. Greytech UK itself offers the full range of services, technical support, training, development, along with sales and account management. We have two offices, Southampton being the head office and the Midlands office opened in 2012 and over 800 UK users of our software. Advanced Steel is part of the Greytech Advanced BIM solution. We have three software packages making up the suite. Advanced Design is a full structural finite element analysis software. Advanced Concrete is a software to design reinforced concrete. And Advanced Steel is the steel detailing solution we will show you today. Using Advanced Steel, full structures can be created with speed and accuracy. We have the full global range of standard beams and bolts and anchors. You can apply any features, cuts and joints you require to those beams and perform clash detection on them. All the time this is using a simple modern ribbon based interface that's user friendly and using shaded rendered views to clearly visualize your model and structure. The software includes a large library of parametric joints or connections which are easily browsed in the library to find us the preview you wish, then apply to the beams where the joint is by default given the BCSA standard sizes from their tables in the green book and then you can override or adjust those to suit your particular situation using simple dialog boxes. If you wish there's an additional feature of checking the joints for loads and EC3 stress calculations. We can also have a wide range of plate work for tools and facilities, including folded plate and notches and cuts or even folded profiles. And each of these can be turned into flat pattern drawings along with NC or DXF files. Our flexible modeling tools have been used to create all sorts of projects globally, such as the industrial equipment you see here or domestic housing, tension fabric structures and other things. We have various wizards or macros for all sorts of common uh, structurally substructures such as cladding, trusses, stairs, railings and so on. These automate repetitive tasks and have a wide range of functions and features to simplify their design. At the end of the project your drawings are all produced automatically. You can produce a full range of general arrangement drawings with any desired labelling and dimensioning and of course all single part and fabrication drawings are also produced automatically. As well as drawings we can produce all required lists and builds of materials in any variety of formats and can customise those to your desires. We also can produce full NC DSTV files and DXF files for feeding into computerised manufacturing equipment. We include proper full revision management control in our system. All documents created are monitored to see if they're up to date and should the mo project or model change then the documents are flagged, you can highlight them and update them and record those changes automatically. As an optional feature if you wish to have it you can use more than one person or engineer to model the same structure using our multi-user tools and they can still see each other's work in the overall structure in context. Being fully BIM compliant we have links to other major software for other disciplines and you have the full range of industry standard and neutral formats to exchange data with other systems. So overall Advanced Steel has a proven track record 
It will reduce your times and costs on the projects, enabling you to perform repetitive or labour-intensive tasks much quicker and more efficiently and more accurately. Advanced Steel has been used for all sorts of projects, prestigious global projects of all natures, such as these in the images here, and projects of all sizes and scales, so smaller projects with architectural detailing as well up to massive projects like this canopy at the Moscow airport or the canopy over the Abu Dhabi Formula One hotel. In the UK our customers cover the full range of those projects from simple canopies up to full industrial complexes and superstores and residential buildings. Even some of the more unusual uses, we can use the plate work to produce other things, not just structures, but in this case a trailer. So now it's on to the demonstration of Advanced Steel itself with the actual software. So this is the Advanced Steel program with a blank file open. It's a completely standalone program running on its own CAD engine, though we do have a version you can run on top of AutoCAD if you wish. As you can see, it's a modern interface based on ribbons, like most modern software. We have a simple logical layout and grouping on our ribbon functions. And then we have tool palettes that are appealing and clear for other functionality and editing. Using a full shaded view, we have a full range of steel objects available. So we have all the steel beams and plates you could wish for, the whole range of sections and the whole global standards for those sections, including many different cold rolled suppliers and manufacturers. We also have concrete elements, walls and slabs, and timber beams. We can produce a full range of industry standard file formats and import and export to different leading software and we have all the range you would expect of NC and DXF output files as well as producing drawings and lists and bills of materials. So let's get into some modeling. First of all I'm going to create a simple grid. You don't have to have a grid with advanced steel but many projects do start with a grid. And that's appeared that's easy to manipulate and edit, so like everything in advanced steel, just have to adjust a dialog box and set the options as you wish to get the desired results, and everything updates immediately live. So create a portal on one end of this building. Places the basic beams, and we can choose the desired dimensions and section sizes we have a wide range of standard parametric connections in our connection vault these are all categorized and grouped and each one has many different types of joint and when you pick a type of joint you get some illustrations of the range of things that joint can achieve and then when you've selected the joint you wish you can simply apply it to the beams you want to add it to within the joint it starts off by placing a standard joint from the configurations based on the BCSA green book tables and if you wish you can choose a different configuration where there may be several choices and the joints will update immediately. You can also override anything you wish within that joint. We have a massive range of options you can play with. including stiffness of every variety that might be appropriate. So 
So I'm happy to accept a BCSA standard joint in each case. And I can copy my choices from one location to another using the simple tools provided. We can also give some context to our portal by adding some concrete objects such as a footing or a continuous footing running between those locations. We can choose the shape and style of that concrete element and we can set any dimensions we wish for that concrete element. So having completed our first portal, we can copy that down our structure very simply. And each of those remains intelligent and parametric as created on the first one. We'd like to put a mezzanine in this end of the building. To help us do that and to see clearly what we're doing, we can use the Project Explorer and create a level at the zero height for the floor level and another level at the desired mezzanine height of three meters and as you can see, everything above 3 meters is now hidden from view to clarify your screen. But also, as I start to draw beams, they are locked on automatically to the 3 meter height that we wish to use. Whenever you draw an individual beam, you can select the full beam size from, first of all, select the generic shape, and then the standard. So there's the whole world standards in there, shortlisted to the local preference and the full range of sizes for that beam. We can also choose how the beam is positioned relative to the points we chose. So you could have it on the bottom corner or the top middle of the flange as we want in this case. And you can rotate the beam to any orientation you wish as well. You can also tell the system what parts this beam plays in your model, whether it's a beam, a column, a rafter, and so forth, which is useful later on. We have special snaps for locking onto key points This time the column is on its center line, needs to be rotated, and of course I'll tell it it is a column, not just a beam. We can apply our joints to these members.
and then copy those joints around as desired. And that's finished our mezzanine but we need to put the columns in all four places so I don't need to draw them individually I can simply copy the first column to its other locations and the joints at the top and bottom go with it so now I'll show the whole model again and tell it I've finished working on the three meter height Without further ado, it's time to show you some drawings for the system. So first move is to number the model and let it count identical components and identify them with part marks. And then we go ahead and ask it to produce the full range of drawings for our existing work so far. So it's produced our drawings. They're all on the disk here in separate files. But we don't have to access them directly from disk. We have our own tool to control and manage these documents. If I look in Document Manager, here's the drawings it's created so far, and we can have a review of those drawings. and the GA drawings we've asked for. I also produced some drawings from those based on typical views we've set up in our project as being required. So it's done a foundation plan and an enlarged detail of one of the base plates. It's also created an end view of the building, a side view of the building and an isometric view. Now I'd actually would have liked the end view to be on the same drawing as the side and the isometric view. That's not a problem. We let the system choose the scale and size of each view, but it's chosen ones we don't like. We can simply select the view we want to move and drag it onto the correct drawing. And it's deleted the unnecessary drawing now and puts all three views onto this one sheet. It's kept the scale it originally chose, but that's not a problem. We simply click on open drawing and then we can edit the drawing as we wish. So we can change the scale of the view simply by selecting the new scale we desire. And then move that view to line it up with the others on the drawing. Like so. All the advanced steel drawings remain fully intelligent and linked to the model. We can update or edit items on the drawings easily and simply. On a GA drawing we might want to add extra subtitles to the title block. Which we can do simply through this little dialog box. And then the drawing views themselves we can add extra information to those. I might, for example, want to add a level symbol to indicate the floor height, like so, or to find out how high my apex is. Just like that. That's measured directly from the model. Or we can add supplementary information about the components. So I might want to add a label to this column. I 
that tells the user the beam size. I don't need the assembly sum number, we have already have that up here. So I can simply edit that note and put on any information I want. So if I don't want the assembly number, perhaps it would be nice to have the material stated clearly. And even the coating or various other information as you can pick from this drop down list here. But intelligent text which is read straight from the model to show what's going on. So having seen the beam size there, maybe I've decided well those columns are a bit big for the job, they don't need to be quite that bad. So what I'll do is uh, go back to the model and I can edit these columns change the properties of those parts, I'll change the beam size to a smaller beam and because we're showing it I'll choose a different material and coating so they're nice and obvious for you to see. So having done those column changes we now need to update our drawings. We can simply go back to the document manager and you can see here it's created a folder called update required listing the drawings that have been affected by the changes I've just made more than just one perhaps more than you realized now those drawings haven't changed yet they still show exactly the same information they showed a second ago but when you're ready and you finish doing all your modification you can click on update revision enter some revision information and when you click OK it will back up the existing files so they can be referred to later and see what the difference between different versions is and it will also update the drawings to the current model data and indicate those changes on the drawings So if we have a look, the drawings that were changed now have the new revision letter on the end of their file name. And if we have a look at one of them, you can see that it's put the revision letter in the title block. It's put a note on a revision table with the information I typed in. And it's also highlighted the changes on that part itself to show exactly what changed, the whole positions and those dimensions. And if you go back to our GA drawing, you can see the changes I made have been kept, the level symbols are still there, and the notes there, even the manual notes are still kept, but the contents of that manual note have updated according to the latest model information. Don't be off put by the colours on the drawings, it's common practice with AutoCAD or with Advanced Steel to have different colours used on the screen to represent different line thicknesses on the paper rather than having it all black and white on screen. OK, let's add some more information to our model and make it more interesting. Advanced Steel includes a full range of tools to model cold rolled components and if you want to put some purlins on one side of the roof here we can just simply select the supporting members and the purlins are placed automatically for us. Now with those purlins we can choose any section size we wish from a wide range of manufacturers we can choose whether it has a single span or various different double span arrangements. Of We can choose the alignment and the spacing of those purlins, positioning the top and the bottom purlin and then equally spacing the others. And we can include the eaves beam, any appropriate member and position for that. And as with all our joints, we can save our preferences in the library and just pick our preference from the list and it will reconfigure to suit what we asked for. 
Our connection vault includes a full range of connections to support these members. One of the more interesting ones might be the anti-sag system. So we have anti-sag systems for side rails or for roofs. And again, you choose the supporting members and the members to be to be supported. And then the system works out based on rules what anti-sag might be required and you can adjust all that with the options in the dialogue if you wish. You may have noticed by now that different members are coming up in different colours. They're placed on different layers automatically by the system. So when it comes to modelling the next part of the structure, perhaps we don't need to see our cold rolled. We can simply go to the ribbon and turn off the layer for cold rolled items and it clarifies our display further again to make life easier to see what the next piece we're concentrating on. Now we'd like to put a balcony at one end of our building and I'm going to draw this from scratch very simply. Simply place a few beams Always snapping to easy points to locate. Now to apply the joints, I'd like to make sure the front beam actually overlaps the side beam so that we can bolt through it nicely. So I simply pick it up and use a grip on the end to extend that beam the required amount. Very simple and easy. No need to deal with complex 3D coordinates or find positions in midair. Then I can copy my existing joints to the new locations. easily. Or of course I can place them again from the connection vault, whichever method I prefer. Now on that balcony I'd like to place some grating flooring. So the first move is to tell it where I need to place that flooring. And I can use our grating tool We have a wide range of common suppliers for grating and we can choose their range of sizes. We need to cut that grating around the column, that's very straightforward. We can simply come down and ask for a cutout in the desired location and give it a size and the job's done. I would also like to place a hole through the grating. I'm going to start off putting the hole in the middle because that's a nice easy place to snap to. But I don't actually want the hole in the middle so I can use the grips to simply move the hole one meter 
that way. The reason I put a hole in is because I'd like to place a water tank on this platform that I'm being supplied by somebody else. So I can import their model, which was created in Inventor or some other solid modeling software. Now this particular part, although I want to show it in my model for clash checking and for reference, I don't want it included on my part numbers or bill of materials. And there you go, I have my water tank mounted effectively. Now to make sure nobody falls off the front of the balcony, I'm going to create some railing around that using our railing tool. And there you have some simple railing, that's quite an industrial looking rail, but you can control everything there is to know about it, from post sections and spacings, to joints with other members, the handrail sections, the middle rails, you can have balusters if you want them, kick plates are optional. For each of those posts you can have the fixings onto the beams, and you can even create a hang off rail or a grab rail if you wish to. Again, all those options are configured and stored in our library so that your favourites or preferences can be recalled in one click like this, which reconfigures the entire railing to your preference. Now, I'm going to draw canopy now for the balcony. I'm going to use a curved beam for that and just for convenience I'm going to start off drawing the curved beam at ground level because again it's a nice easy point to snap to. Position it how I want it. And then I can move it into its proper position simply. I need one on both columns, so I'll copy that one to the other column. And now I need a beam across the front to tie them together. And I'm going to use a channel for that. So I could go through and place an I-beam and then change it, but it's easier to choose a channel directly. And I need to tell it I want to line up with that angle at the front of the beam. I've no idea what the angle is, but I can simply ask the system to line up with the front of the beam and then draw my channel across the front like so. And that's tailored or matched perfectly to the angle the front of the curved section again I'll just extend it 100 mil each way so I've got enough beam to bolt through and then I'll copy my joints Perhaps on the back of that curved beam I'll put a small haunch. I need to adjust the size of that a little so maybe I'll make the haunch piece longer and a bit deeper. Make sure the plate is sufficient depth and even move the bolt down 
to make sure it doesn't clash with the flange. I'm happy with that. So I'll copy that joint to the other beam. Okay. Now at this point it might be that somebody has decided the balcony you've just created so nicely isn't big enough and it needs to be wider. That's not a problem. I can simply use a move command. Select the members that need to be moved. That will be the front members on the balcony and the canopy and move them forward. When I do this note what happens at this end of the balcony especially. So I'm going to move it forwards 500 millimeters and after a few seconds thought the side beams have been extended automatically to carry on reaching the front beam. The railing has computed that the maximum position distance between the posts has been exceeded and therefore it's automatically placed a new middle post on the sides and respaced all the balusters to make sure they maintain the correct equal spacing. The curved beam has been extended so it still meets the front column, the front flange of the column and the haunch has been adjusted its angle and everything to suit. Because I did a move I didn't actually want to move the grating so I left that out but now I can simply lock into the snap and move or stretch that forward 500 mil as well. So what could have been a complex change is achieved in a few seconds. Now to make sure we can access this platform I'm going to create some stairs and I personally like to create construction lines for my stairs. And this construction line is used to locate the top and bottom of the nosing line for the stair. Then I can use the stair macro. I want a stair from the bottom to the top. And there's my stair created. Now again this come up straight away with a default stair using a grating for the tread and an end plate on each grating which is bolted to the stringer but you can change everything you could want again. You can change the stringer section, the overall size of the stair, the spacing of the treads has been calculated using the standard 2R plus G formula but you can override it if you wish. We're not stuck with gratings for the treads, we have 24 styles of tread to choose from and each one of those has a full range of dimensions for the tread and the mounting bracket underneath. Top tread and bottom tread can be different to the others and we can create the landings at the top and bottom to finish the stair off nicely as well. As always we can save that in our library and choose our preference from there. So in one click I've now changed that so the treads are now folded plate overlapping at the front of each tread with countersunk screws through to an angle bracket underneath which is welded this time to the stringer. The bottom tread is slightly different because we wanted to make sure there was no gap between the tread and the floor it has a longer front lip. Now to tidy off the bottom end nicely we have a special range of joints for stairs. So I can use a stair base and it will put a small vertical component on the stringer and base plate and if I need to go through some screed I can simply adjust the base level with one value like so. And then put the same joint on the other stringer. Our railing macro doesn't just handle horizontal beams, we can handle curved beams or sloping beams. So I'm going to put some railing up one side of this stair as an example. And to show some more range of what it can achieve I'll choose a different standard out of our examples. And You can see there this one has different mounting arrangement, lots of middle rails and it's got nice end treatments to the railing as well. But at the bottom perhaps we need to change that a little bit because we should have a horizontal portion at the bottom of a stair. So it's no problem. I can simply change my options in the macro to suit. Simple as that. Okay, so the next step is to update and do some more of our drawings. I 
once again I'll update the numbering so it counts all the new components I've included and then I'll tell it to go ahead and draw all our remaining assemblies haven't already been drawn Now it's completed those. I can go to the document manager and review what I have. As you would expect, Advanced Steel does a good job of fabrication drawings for simple objects like this beam that you saw earlier. You can see the drawings are fully annotated and dimensioned and they include a bill of materials on the corner if you wish. But as well as the simple components, more complicated components like the railing also do a good fabrication drawing, including the bill of materials and all the parts labelled that you would expect giving you a good range of all the manufacturing dimensions so having finished looking at the drawings we need to now create some bills of materials to go with those and we do that through the same interface we have a range of bills materials we provide as samples but you can fully customize these as you wish starting from a basic list of materials shows all our parts sorted by section size and each time showing the individual length material and so on and weight these lists can be exported to PDF files, rich text files for Word or Excel files for easy downstream use. We can also produce more exotic lists such as this one called a saw list with pictures. and when you look at that one it lists each beam in your structure with its saw length and with any mitres on the end it lists the angle and the depth of that cut so they're easy to manufacture without using drawings just for that first stage of manufacturing as well as the lists we can produce the full set of NC files to the DSTV standard with one click and we can produce a full set of DXF drawings for all the plates with one click and review those in document manager too here's our DSTV files you can review the contents of the computer code if you wish to and we also have the DXF files for plate profiling which you can feed into those machine tools some other miscellaneous steel work you can produce if you wish to include cladding so I'd like to show you how we would do that. I'm just going to put some very simple cladding on the end of our building. And to do cladding, all you need to do is draw the outline you require. I'm just going to very roughly draw around the end of our building
I'm also going to draw some windows. So I'll just use simple rectangles for that. So, once we've drawn the shapes we wish to use, we can simply define those to say this is a cladding area. Do we want a supporting beam? I haven't got end rails, but I'm going to use the hot rolled floor beam just as an example for demonstration purposes. Then we define our opening. And finally, we actually create our cladding to fill the area defined. Now, we have a wide range of cladding suppliers within the system. And we can choose any of those we wish. So I'll choose something appropriate and then depending on your cost option you wish to go for you can choose the shape of the cladding is either all the same level or it cuts to different lengths or it cuts precisely to the shape you've asked for like so and if I isolate two individual pieces of cladding you can see that it it overlaps the length of the cladding where I said there was a supporting beam so that they can be overlapped and fixed through and it also overlaps the width of the cladding to model the accurate corrugations of whatever panel you've specified and overlap the width by the precise amount to suit that particular shape of panel to interlock them correctly so there's no errors on the plate widths either And here is a typical cladding drawing that we can produce, which as you see has all the required dimensions for the cutouts and the overall panel. To go with the cladding, we might want some flashing. So I'll turn the cold rolled back on. And say that we'd like to put some flashing around the end of the eaves beam and I'm only going to do this very roughly so I'm just going to draw a very rough shape and we can create any section we like dynamically on the fly so I'm just going to draw quickly around there something like that and then I'm going to tell the system to convert that line we've just drawn into a beam like so I can control the thickness of the material and I can even choose to put a radius in different corners so if I ask for a radius in that corner, then we can see it's applied that as well. Maybe I'll change that to the layer for cladding flashing so that it's more distinctive. So it's very simple to create dynamic beams if you need to do that. Now to conclude the demonstration, I'd like to show you one extra function and I have some construction lines already prepared in another file. What I'd like to do is create a hopper between this square which changes that oval shape at the bottom mounted on the two grey beams. So I can simply start off I need to place some mounting flanges which I can place on the grey beams like 
that should be about 100 wide, 1200 long. And I'll put a flange on the other side as well. And then the clever function is I ask for a folded plate between that shape and that shape. And there it is in one move. Now these mounting flanges aren't part of the beam or part of the plate yet. So I simply come in and ask it to create a fold between that plate and that plate and it's put a fold in there for me. I'll do the same to the other flange. Create a fold between that plate and that plate. Now those flanges aren't much use unless they're bolted down. So I'll ask for a set of bolts between that flange and the channel. And they're going to be one five long, 200 spacing. And I think I'll have those countersunk like so. I'll put the same on this flange and channel. And you can see there that they actually do go straight through the channel and bolt in correctly with the right length of bolt. And that's all very well. We can quickly create the shapes, but can we make them? Well, if we want to have a look at what the flat pattern's like, we simply ask it to display unfolded. And there you go, there's the flat pattern, including the flanges and the countersunk holes, all in the correct position. And when you ask for a drawing, it'll give you a dimensioned flat pattern drawing. So that concludes the live demonstration portion. So thank you very much for your attention during that demonstration. As you can see, Advanced Steel is a very competent all-round piece of software for steel detailing. If you would like any further information, then please don't hesitate to contact us on these details, and we'll be happy to discuss how we can help you going forward.